Welcome to LTG Live Podcast, and I'm glad to introduce my co-host, Peter Reese. Peter, how are you? What is up, man? I'm doing well. Feels good. Man, we started in-person services again. I'm doing great. Did you? Good, I'm doing good. That's great, great. Bro. Hey, thanks for getting the yellow memo today. I appreciate oh, I, it. It was come great. Come on, this was Wait. the only color. <laughs> <laughs> color color coordinated here you know we're yes. just we're trying we're trying to make it work so yeah oh uh, man i see some of you on watching right now i see christian bowers out there i see uh matthew love out there man and and uh for those of you that are on right now go ahead and give us a shout out in the comments on facebook we'd love to see uh where you're watching from maybe even who you're watching with and um be be ready to engage in this conversation uh, in just a minute, Peter, we're going to introduce uh, uh, a good friend of mine and I think a new friend of yours, right? Yep, um, yep. And we're going to talk about spiritual fathering in youth ministry. I think this is going to be a great conversation um, that probably in a lot of ways will really tie in with a lot of what's happening in our in our world and in our nation right yeah, now. Um, and so we'll let some of that just come out, you know, real uh, organically. But um, we're glad that you're with us. Uh, we're glad that you're watching right now. Do us a favor. And if you haven't liked the Lead the Generation Facebook page, go ahead and click on that like button right now because uh, that's going to notify you every single week when we go live. Um, and also maybe give us a like now in the stream as well as a share. That would help us just kind of spread the word about these conversations. Absolutely. Right. And so and Peter, we're not just live here. Um, we also take this and we put it on YouTube afterwards as well as podcast, which as of this week is finally verified and approved on apple Woo, like Boom. <laughs> we feel like we've made it finally like hey we made it to apple podcast where you know it's just great so um rusty williams i see you doug smith alex uh Malton, new jersey in the house uh good to see all of you there it's been great and um peter we talked about this a little bit last week but it's kind of a good segue into our conversation today but this sunday is your very first father's day Come on, yes. man. It's huge, man. So excited. I and, bet you uh, are. Dude, I, I like, it's just weird still, man. It really is. It's like, wow. Yeah. First Father's Day. You know? First Father's Day. <laughs> Come on. I'm wearing my Father's Day present. This is my Father's Day present right here. This okay. Is, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like I'm, it. I don't know that I've ever worn this color before in my life. And my, <laughs> my girls got it for me. And they're like, dad, we think you're going to look good in yellow. So try it out. I'm like, all right. Father's Day, here we go. <laughs> I love it. We think you're going to look good at it. There you go. Okay, I know, I know right? <laughs> we think, we think. And, and they're like, try it on. If you don't, we'll send it back. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> they'll tell you, they'll tell you. See, I'm at, the, I have my, my, you know, our, my kids are all older now, right? Two teenage daughters and then our, my, my son is a young adult. But like, yeah. when you get to that, that part of fathering, Peter, like, Get ready for your kids to have no problem telling you exactly what they think of the way you look. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't know if I can handle that. That is... I'm just saying get ready. Get ready. Yeah, that, that, I, will, I can wait on those days. I'll wait on there that. There you go. You'll, yeah. you'll have time. You'll have time to yeah, warm up. Yeah. Hey, shout yeah. out to more people who are in, uh, jumping in. I see Lori yeah. Lori's one of my leaders. I see Craig Hicks, Alex Come Kirsten. on, Those Craig. are all people I love. I love Those these people. people. I love. Yes. Ricky Ingram. I see you. Micah Reed. Yeah, it's great, Ricky man. Ricky Echiona. Rusty Williams. Guy. Rusty. Oh, Rusty's one of my childhood friends, man. We grew up going to uh, to like our family's vacation together in the summer. Yeah. So we have all kinds of crazy childhood stories. In fact, that's awesome. Rusty and I and his and his older sister Michelle, when we would go to these campgrounds, the three of us would walk around, knock on. We were all PKs. We would knock on people's campers and try to witness to them. <laughs> And then one, one time we made up flyers, like handwritten flyers. We passed them out that we were going to have revival services at the end of the week. Like we were like, we were all in as kids. That's just saying. awesome. So. I love that. <laughs> so, but listen, in honor of Father's Day for you and for me, we're going to talk today uh, on the topic, spiritual fathering in youth ministry. This is a, yes. a topic that I am so passionate about. I know you are as well. Um, and uh, those of you that are watching right now, um, again, give us a like, but more importantly, share it maybe with a friend. If you're a youth pastor, share this with some of your youth leaders right now. I think this conversation is going to be highly practical, yet very informative yes. for those that are working, the adults that are working with students on a regular basis, right? 
And uh, so we've invited a, a friend. Uh, yeah, I've, I've known Pastor Joey Silver for uh, a year or so now. I think you've just more recently met him, but he is a great youth pastor in the Assemblies of God. Um, and uh, he's a new father as well. I think this is his first Father's Day coming up. So we'll talk to him about that in just a minute whenever he jumps on the broadcast, Peter. But um, Pastor Joey, pastor, youth pastors at Belmont Assembly of God in the Chicago area. And uh, he's got a great perspective on this topic. So everybody in the chat, let's welcome uh, to, the, to the LTG Live podcast today, Pastor Joey Silva. Pastor Joey, there you are, hey, man. Guys. We're glad to have you. How are you, What's brother? Up? I am good. I am good. Actually, let me clarify that I am in Chicago. We always have a pet peeve for okay. people who are in the Chicago area because that can be two and a half hours away from Chicago. I am in Chicago. I, I know. I know. See, because I grew up in <laughs> Joey's Pittsburgh. Joey's a real one. Like in Pittsburgh. And when people say, oh, I'm from Pittsburgh, I'm like, where from? And they're like, oh, from Altoona. I'm like, no, no, that's an yeah. hour. <laughs> okay. So I, I feel you. I feel you yeah. on that one for sure. And, um, uh, yeah, Peter, I was say, yeah I, I, it's my first Father's Day as well. Um, okay. My baby girl is taking a nap right now, but uh, that's her. If you guys come want to see. on, oh, she's beautiful. let's go. That's let's just go. six months. <laughs> so she I was born it. with that much hair. So she's she's always she got her so daddy's good. good hair. Those locks it's so of love. Good. Just... It's so good. Um, so <laughs> P Peter, you and I are gonna have to chip in and buy Joey a yellow uh, shirt or sweatshirt for Father's Day. We're just gonna have yeah. to send him something because we got yeah. yeah we. We're sorry we didn't, you didn't get the memo, yeah. man. My my yeah. bad on that. But um, dude, say we're so glad. Product of Chi Town. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. If you were with us, those of you that are watching right now, if you were with us for the LTG conference online, uh, Pastor Joey was one of our guest interviews uh, right after the lunch break and uh, was a part of the conference. And also, you did a breakout at the conference as well, um, yeah. which was great. Um, but today we're talking about a different topic. We're talking about the topic of spiritual fathering. Uh, in youth ministry, I I think this is a this is great. This is going to hit all of us in different ways, right? Because but because both of you guys uh, are young dads as far as you know being a father uh, in a, in a family, yet mm. you both have been in youth ministry for a, an extended period of time, and so you you've had that opportunity to really take on uh, what I call the mantle of you know spiritual fathering. Um, for my wife and I, you know, about twenty years in student ministry. Uh, 15 plus years at the same church, uh, man, we really, especially a little later on when we got into like our late twenties or early thirties and our kids started growing up, man, we really took on like that feeling of like, man, we are spiritual mom and spiritual dad to our kids. Uh, in fact, um, still on occasion, uh, my wife, uh, we'll get a text message on Mother's Day from some of the girls in her small group and say, hi, Mama Julie, just wanted to say I love you. And and there are still times I'll get a Father's Day card in the mail from some of the students that were in our youth ministry. So this is a, one of those topics I think that's near and dear to all of us. And Joey, uh, we appreciate you uh, jumping on today and uh, being a part and speaking into this. Um, yeah. So. For those of you that are new uh, to LTG Live, uh, this is not just a Facebook Live. This is also LTG Live podcast. So our podcast usually goes live every Monday morning. We have about 10 episodes. I don't know, Peter, did you realize that? We just hit 10 last week, the magic no, number 10. No, it doesn't yeah, even, yeah. that's crazy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, awesome. Uh, if you've missed any of our previous episodes, you can go to Apple Podcasts. We're going to post a link uh, in the chat for you where you can subscribe. You can catch any of our previous episodes. It's also available on our YouTube channel as well. We'll post a link for that as well. Uh, and this is all sponsored by leadthegeneration.com. Uh, it is the nonprofit ministry that my wife and I uh, founded a couple years ago. And uh, Peter and Joey, you've both been a part of, of a lot of, of what we've done over the years. And so we're, we're grateful. Um, but today uh, we're talking specifically on the topic of spiritual fathering in youth ministry uh, if you're just joining the conversation, give us a shout out in the chat. Give us a, a like and a share because we want as many people to, to be introduced to, uh, to Joey Silva and his ministry and, and his, uh, some of his thoughts on this. So, uh, Joey, let's just jump in here and uh, tell us a little bit. For those, of, those that don't know you at all, um, tell us a little bit about your, yourself, your family, your church. Just give us a little bit of background. It'll help give us some context in this conversation. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I, you know, I'm uh, I'm lucky enough that I've gotten a pastor at my church uh, for almost now a dozen years. Um, wow. So I'm, I'm wow. getting Come up on. to year 12. And before that, I was a youth leader for five years in the same ministry. And before that, I was a student in the youth ministry. So I've, like I said, I literally got hired at my church. And so that's Come really on. exciting. 
um, yeah. you know, and, and not that we've uh, not gotten offers and all these other things, but you kind of hit the jackpot when you get hired at your home church in a lot of right. places, in a lot of cases, because yeah. it's just, yeah, it's not about the money. It's not about, it's just, I get to focus on building up my church, which has been great. Um, and then, you know, for about, you know, we have our, our new baby girl, her name is Josie, uh, Josie Silva. And, uh, you know, for about five years, we uh, were trying to have children and uh, my wife has endometriosis and that complicated the situation. So we weren't sure if we were ever going to be able to have children. Um, it just was one of those things where we just kind of left it up in God's hands. And uh, the really cool thing is I really felt like I was comfortable with that. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like if that's what the Lord had for me and, and in his wisdom decided we weren't going to have children, I was okay with that. And I think a big part of why I was okay with that is because mm -hmm. I didn't feel the absence of fathering people. I've had uh, so many young people that I've had an opportunity to spiritually father that mm -hmm. I never felt like I was really missing out. And especially because they didn't have children, I didn't know what that was like. So you don't right. miss what you don't know. And right. so all I knew was spiritual fatherhood. All I knew mm -hmm. was loving on kids who, who didn't have spiritual fathers. And in many of my kids' situations, I think statistically right now, over 40% of every child born in the United right. States is born without a father. Right. I just felt like there's plenty of work for me to do as a dad right here. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that was always my focus. That was always my heart. And now that I have my daughter, I just added that to the mix. And I think it enriches right. what it means for me right now because I'm learning lessons every single day. You know, every little thing that she does is just a great reminder of what I'm supposed to do with everybody else. And so, you know, like I said, I've been in my church for almost 12 years now. Um, you know, my family is growing and doing great. And, uh, and I'm really lucky to, to I, I was had both my parents, they're godly people. Um, I've, I've been raised in a good environment, albeit in a rough neighborhood. Um, and because a lot of the spiritual fathers that I had uh, in my life and even uh, my biological father, I think I avoided a lot of the stereotypical things that many guys in my neighborhood and situation would have fell into. Um, mm -hmm. It was just one of those things where yeah, I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't looking for a male role model to, you know, even with the gangs and stuff like that. I was like, I barely want to listen to my mom and dad. I'm going to listen to this moron. Tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm not joining your dumb group. Um, yeah. So there was always, you know, there's always this thing that because I wasn't missing out, I didn't go look for it in, in, in wrong places. Wow. I had a great support system, even in my youth pastors and honestly, spiritual mothers that uh, helped in the same way. Right. Um, and, and because I had that, I get a deep sense of wanting to be that for other people. That's so good. You yeah. know, Peter, I know that part of Joey's story connects with, with, uh, you and Joanna's story. I'm going to give yeah. you a chance to, you know, make that connection for the audience that might not know. Yeah. So me and Joey, we actually just got on a call together and talked about this, uh, just a few weeks ago because my wife has endometriosis as well. And so we went on a three year journey, uh, of just trying to figure out how we were going to have kids and. Joey is full of faith. I I was not. I was angry. I was like, God, what do you mean? Like, we gave our whole lives to serve you. And, you know, it would be like we would see people, um, you know, maybe who were not even married. And then they would accidentally have a baby. We're like, accidentally? We've been trying to do this for three years, you know. So uh, we always knew that uh, God put it in our hearts as well uh, to adopt. And so when we kind of figured out, man, this might not work, we were like, you know, let, let's just pursue what God put in our heart and we'll and we'll try to adopt. And uh, so we did we decided to foster to adopt. And uh, so we just went ahead and, and did that. And uh, we have a beautiful boy and a beautiful girl. I can't say their names because they're still in foster care. We'll show you pictures, but they're <laughs> beautiful. Trust me. And, uh, yeah. and and then we got both of them. And then uh, three weeks later, we found out that my wife uh, was pregnant. And it was like, what? We just said yes. <laughs> to these. And so we went from zero to three. Uh, babies do in literally like three and a half weeks. And we're pumped, man. We're so pumped. I we're hoping it. that we're going to, uh, the, the case is going to continue and we'll be able to adopt uh, our other two babies as well. And we went from zero to three. So uh, we're, we're in a zone defense family now. And uh, that man-to-man -man stuff go. is dead. 
And uh, yeah, so give us your tips on the triangle well, offense. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and you know, Peter. Normally, we we have some basketball questions to start, but I mean, Joey's a Chicago guy, so I think we already know how he's going to answer the question. So we're not even yeah, going to ask him. You know, all it's day. We're not, not asking him goat <laughs> he questions. Said all, day. Not, <laughs> all day, horribly, horribly biased. <laughs> <laughs> At least he admits it. At least he admits yeah, it. I'm okay, good. Yeah. We're, we're good. We're good. Let's just That's let's awesome. just move on. So, so. so um, Joey, I love your perspective. Uh, some of the comments you made, there's so much that we could unpack and, uh, I'll, and, and you're going to really guide a lot of how you want the conversation to go with some of these questions on spiritual fathering. But you talked a lot about your own experience growing up, having spiritual fathers, which included your own physical father and the protective covering that that provided for you. So before we jump into maybe some of the more practical, how do you do this in a youth ministry setting, which is there's a lot of youth pastors watching today that are probably wondering that, right? So before we go there, we're going to have that conversation. Give me a biblical foundation for this. And Peter, feel free to jump in on this as well. Give me a biblical foundation for the, the theology or the concept or the practice of spiritual fathering, right? Yeah. I think that's so important as a youth pastor or, and, and, and not this, you and I, you, we all know this. We're all youth pastors, been youth pastors, so on. But we know this topic of spiritual fathering goes far beyond just youth ministry, right? But, but we also recognize our audience as a lot of youth pastors. Yeah. Uh, but, but give us a biblical context for this, because I think a lot of youth pastors, especially when you're younger in youth ministry, you know, you're in like your early 20s. It's really, it can be really hard to wrap your, uh, your, your, your head around the idea of I'm going to be a spiritual father when you're like, I ain't even married yet. <laughs> you know, so give it, give it to us from a biblical foundation and then, and then, uh, and feel free to jump in as well, Peter. And then, then we'll kind of navigate towards the more practical side of this. Sure. I think you see that laid out in the entirety of the Bible. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, Paul and Timothy, uh, Elijah and Elijah. Um, you know, uh, Moses and Joshua, like there is this constant raising up and spiritual fatherhood. And I think it's important for that next generation to be able to have those examples and those people, you know, you look at Timothy and he was a young preacher, you know, some think he was around 30 years old at the time of first and second Timothy. And he's in charge of all these elderly men, many of which mm. were probably coming out of the mm. synagogue, wiser than him, smarter than him more prepped than him but he had a spiritual father who constantly reminded him that he didn't have a spirit of fear right this was somebody that acknowledged him and even vouched for him i don't imagine timothy would have been able to take the mantle he did had paul not vouched for him had paul not been willing to step up but then even right. then paul had barnabas someone probably his own age who vouched for him who was right. willing to put his neck out and i think a lot of what spiritual fatherhood is 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 putting your neck out for that next person with all their mistakes, with all their flaws and saying, Hey, I know they're not where they could be or should be even sometimes, but I'm going to put myself out there for them to help guide them to that next step. And I think the important aspect of that is we got to remember, unless the Lord returns anytime soon, we are in the business of replicating ourselves Come on. and making sure that we, that's, you know, whole lead the generation. We got to leave it to somebody to lead it if the Lord doesn't right. come back in our lifetime. Now, that's our hope. That's our yeah. goal. But if you see throughout the entirety of the Bible, there was this constant replication. And I think that's why you get the gospel message being transferred from generation to generation is because there were men and women who were willing to raise up spiritual sons and daughters. Uh, you look at, again, going with Timothy, we don't hear much about his dad. Uh, I think some scholars believe he was Greek. But you do hear a lot about his mother and his grandmother, yeah. who were both early parts of the church. So right. Timothy needed a dad. And here comes mm. Paul and ends up being a dad to Timothy. Again, yeah. I don't know all the ins and outs. The Bible doesn't really tell us if his father was a good father. Uh, but it does seem to, um, I think, maybe illustrate or, or hint at that maybe his dad wasn't around the full aspect of Timothy's life. And then a perfect opportunity, Paul comes in. And Paul ends up becoming uh, not necessarily a replacement, but an addition that really helps Timothy carry the gospel. That's huge. Yeah, and that's I'll so speak beautiful. to that before you jump in, Peter, because I, I often say to youth pastors, I have had and have to this day a great father. Uh, he was, you know, on the episode with, uh, about racism we did a couple of weeks ago. I just talked with him about 45 minutes before we came on. Right. Um, 
yet as a young man growing up, I needed other spiritual fathers, other great men of God yes. to speak into my life and to pour into me. And I could just start naming names, probably at this point in my life, dozens of spiritual fathers, some that have been with me for decades and some that were just with me in specific seasons, but they had tremendous impact on my life. Um, Peter, Peter, jump in on this, this, the, yeah. the, the biblical foundation of spiritual fathering. Yeah, I think I love, love, love the, the relationship between Paul and Timothy. And, and that's a relationship I, I try to look at a lot. And uh, as I model what it looks like to be a pastor and to a spiritual father to students uh, in this time, in this generation. And the three things that I see uh, in that relationship between Paul and Timothy that really helped me create a biblical framework for what a father is, is, is character, right? Paul's consistently speaking to Timothy's character, calling him to to be better, honestly, privately than he is publicly, really saying, hey, what, you remember the transfer that happened when I laid my hands on you uh, when your mom was there? And, and, and like just a beautiful uh, moment to speak into Timothy's character. But then also correction, correcting him on what, what should be done in the church, right? When you put in authority and leadership in the church, this is what should happen. And, the, and, and I believe Paul's speaking not just like, like, hey, you should just learn to know this. He's speaking like from I've seen it go the wrong way. And so I'm correcting you and giving you some insight into what the way it's done best. And then lastly, confidence, which is like my favorite part about being uh, a spiritual dad to some of these students is, is, is instilling the confidence in them uh, to say you're called to more, to help them see beyond the veil. I was just talking to our student ministry last night uh, about uh, Jesus's encounter with Zacchaeus. And one of the phrases is, um, you know, Zacchaeus, he ends up climbing the tree because he can't see over the crowd as mm. spiritual fathers that's what we're called to help the people our, our sons go. and daughters do is to see Come over on. the crowd right yeah. it's to yeah. say you you have the strength to climb you have the strength to get fresh perspective don't stop being curious so like i see all of those three things care uh correction uh confidence and character in this relationship that paul's trying to help timothy build and it stirs Love my it. heart to want to help the people around me uh the students that are call me you know dad this is great, guys. I love this is so good. So, Joey, we're gonna come back to you with a couple more more practical questions. I want to give a shout out to a bunch of friends that are I'm watching jump on here. Reggie Woo! Hill, James, uh, uh, James, Steve Mason, Gavin Brown. That's one of my brothers. I love him. Randy Ramos, uh, Ty Buckingham, Jeff Grinnell. That's like the legend right there. Like I, you know, yeah. it's gl glad you're with us. Tony Cruz, Josh Wolf, so many good good people that are a part of this conversation. And if you're watching right now. Feel free to drop in the comments thoughts you have about Please. spiritual fathering and youth ministry. Feel free to ask some questions. In fact, we, we brought Joey on so you could ask him incredibly difficult questions. That's that was ultimately <laughs> why why <we, no. laughs> and uh, but feel free to put your comments and questions uh, in in the chat, and we'd love to hear from you and have you engage and be part of this conversation, not just yeah. listening in, but be a part of it as well. And uh, so, Joey, we're, we're going to kind of trend the conversation a little more towards the practical side here. Um, so let me just kind of set you up with a couple questions that will kind of lead our conversation there. Um, so here, what does spiritual fathering look like in your youth ministry? You know, so for, for every youth pastor out there who's listening right now and, and they feel this, uh, maybe this, this twinge in their heart of like, yeah, that, I, I need that or I want that. That's great. I love conversations that blend high inspiration with high practicality, right? Or, or high inspiration with high information. Cause I think we can, we can go one way or the other too easily. It's all inspiration and that sounds great. I feel great about it, but I don't know what to do. Or yeah. it's, it's all information that are like, I don't know. It was kind of boring. I don't, you know, so that's where I'm hoping to get this conversation to hit. So, yeah. so we've, we've, we've done a little bit of inspiration. More of that will come out. Um, give us some of the, the what, it, what it practically looks like for you. I think I could put it, um, you know, there's a lot of, we're talking about Father's Day coming up. There's a lot of uh, dads who aren't fathers. And what I mean by that is um, they got somebody pregnant and they were never a part of their life. And technically they're the biological dad, but they're not mm. the father. And wow. the thing I think pastors need to understand with youth ministry, you don't get a choice on being a spiritual parent. By the very nature of your position, they're going to look to you as that figure. And right. so you can either be an intentional father or an absent father. And there has to be intentionality a lot of times behind embracing how they're looking at you. 
Um, now, again, I think there's a, a caution behind that <laughs> because especially if the child doesn't have a biological father, they might try to make you the surrogate. And there's an unhealthiness with that to a certain extent that I've always been cautious about making right. sure they understand there's a difference between being your spiritual father and being your dad. I'm not paying for your college tuition. I'm not buying you a new car. You know, there's a lot of things that aren't a part of the role that I feel God has called me to be in your life. But to be a spiritual father, there is intentionality in that. Uh, I have a young man who I've loved, you know, since he was in seventh grade. He's already you know, almost 25 years old. But I remember I was the only man at each of his graduations, his eighth grade graduation, his high school graduation wow. and his college graduation. Wow. And I made it a point to say, you know, I don't go to all graduations because we got a lot of kids graduating in a lot of different schools. So sometimes it's hard to navigate all that. But I made a point to say, I'm going to go to his graduation. I'm going to make sure that I'm a part of each one of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and to this day, we have a very strong relationship. Uh, I remember there was another young man. Um, again, this is talking about not noticing you're a spiritual parent. Uh, I love the kid. He came in our youth ministry. Dad was in jail. Dad actually died his sophomore year in jail. And we ended up mm -hmm. being at that funeral and trying to help him. Uh, but I've always had a good relationship with them. And I remember, er, this is early on in my youth ministry, he kept doing inappropriate jokes and uh, jokes that were borderline offensive or like, they were funny, don't get me wrong, we laugh. But I'm like, <laughs> dude, you, you can't make jokes like that. And I started to notice, I was like, man, I gotta help this guy. And then I just picked up, he's just making jokes he's heard me say over the years before I became the youth pastor and I was a youth leader and there was a lot of immaturity still in me and I was wow. trying to get people to like me. So he was saying the same things he saw me say. Yeah. The difference was when I became a pastor, I realized I can't get away with that stuff anymore. I got to get better. Yeah. I got to grow. And I didn't teach him to do that. So I was getting mad at him for being who I was. And you flash forward mm. now, he's, you know, mid 20s, something like that. His wife was asking or his wife met me for the first time. And she's like, I don't know. He's kind of intimidating. He's, he's a little intense. I don't know if I'm going to get along with him. And he told his wife, well, you better learn to get along with them because if you want to understand who I am, you got to understand who he is because everything I am is who he made me. And I never even thought of it that way. I mean, it was, he blew me away with that statement. Um, mm. But when I really realized that I was going to impart whether I wanted to or not, that they're going to learn and pick up from me, whether I'm intentional or not intentional, I decided to be intentional. Wow. And a lot of that intentionality has to do with what you personally, I think, are putting out there. They're not always going to listen to you, but they absolutely are always watching. And they're watching everything you do and how you do it and, and what you say and how you say it. And so, you know, I made a point then uh, to be intentional about those kind of conversations, to be intentional about how we interact with each other, um, making sure that, okay, if I'm going to be a spiritual dad, uh, let me make sure that I'm a spiritual father. You know, I don't want these wow. kids to just be my children because they're in my youth ministry. I want them to be my kids because I know what's going on in their lives and I can speak into those things and I can help them navigate the things that they're trying to navigate in this world. Yeah, that's, yeah, so that's really good. I, 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 you know, this is, a, it, it's funny, but it isn't funny. It's one of those things. I saw a tweet uh, that someone put out. They said, um, if, if, <laughs> They said, if I ever, if my wife gets pregnant, I think I'm going to leave her because it's it's known that single moms breed athletes. I'll see you on draft day. And I thought to myself, that is so horrible. Yet it's so, anyway. But when I think about like the practicalities of our student ministry and how we, how, first of all, this is my goal for every leader is to turn them into a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. Um, and we have kind of three sectors that we look at uh, that are, is extremely important uh, in helping parent someone and uh you know obviously you know the goal of our youth ministry as well is not just to turn these leaders into spiritual moms and dads but to help their parents their already physical parents become better parents but um we the, the three that we kind of look at are uh, be present joey i love what you said you showed up so all three of those gradu graduations that's what we do we encourage our leaders and uh really our student leaders even to to help our leaders say, hey, this is where you need to be present. My friend's coming, and this is where you can be present in their life. Leaders giving the option to see, hey, this is where you can be present. Being present is 50% of the spiritual uh, parenting equation, I think, is just showing up. Aaron, I think about our relationship. Uh, yeah. There's been moments that you've shown up for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's big, right? Show up. And then I would say another 25% of it is show care. 
right? This is where you're saying, hey, Peter, what's going on with Joanna? Hey, Peter, how far are we out from the pregnancy? Hey, Peter, what's God speaking to you? Hey, Peter, what's the vision for your life, right? It's those that showing care, helping me develop a palate that is going to help me mature, right? Not just leaving my maturity up to chance. That is spiritual fathering and mothering. You're not letting me leave my maturity up to, well, with time he'll grow. No, no, you're saying this yeah. is what you need to be thinking about. Uh, and then lastly, create moments, creating moments. Man, I, I think about being a dad right now, and like this is my favorite part of being a dad is when I get to go on a cake pop date uh, with me and my daughter, right? And we're creating a moment that she probably won't remember until I show her the picture. And even when I show her it, she might not remember, right? I'm it, sending it, you what, a Starbucks card right now so you can go on a cake pop date. I'm serious, man. I appreciate that, right? It's it's like when I, my little boy, he can't speak. He doesn't know words. He's just saying mama and dada. But when like I spent 35 minutes this morning just holding him, speaking, like praying over him, telling him things he probably doesn't even understand yet, creating yeah. those moments and getting myself in the rhythm of doing that. So I think in our youth ministry, we really try to focus a lot on those three areas. Be present first and foremost, show care, create moments. And that's how we can begin to develop you so that you can be a great uh, spiritual parent. That's the Joey, real quick, Joey, I feel I... like Peter, Peter came loaded for bear. Like he's like, it's, I think three things here. I think three <laughs> things here. Like he, he's I, talking I in threes up. today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, let me, let me chime in with that, though, just on a practical thing with those examples. Uh, I had a young lady one time who uh, reminded me about her play that I said I was going to go to. And I was like, well, what, well, yeah, yeah. When, when is the play again? I just want to make sure. She gives me the date. It's the same day as the Chicago Bulls playoff game that I had tickets to. Okay? Come on. So I'm thinking – Oh man, I did say that I would go to her theme. And so I spent literally a week trying to unload Chicago Bulls playoff tickets. And listen, we ain't been in the playoffs a lot since the right. Jordan era. So right. I, I was like really figuring it out. And finally I unloaded them. I go to this young girl's play, right? It's like an hour and a half long play. Child got one line in the entire play. She said, yes, three, three letters, one line. I gave up Bulls tickets to show up to this play. I was, I had flowers. I'm like, I don't even think I should give you flowers for one line. Um, <laughs> I, I say that to say she never forgot that I showed up. She Peter's never shocked right now. He's, shy, he's speechless. Yeah. 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 But listen, yeah. if, if the game was more important than the fathering, I think mm. that's where we mess up yeah. because yeah. I wouldn't have remembered the game. I don't even remember if we won or lost that game, honestly, yeah. but I remember her reaction of me showing up. And it's not like I told her, hey, you know, I gave up a Bulls game for this. I never said anything. Yeah. I said I was going to be there, so I had to be there. Right. So, Joey, wow. I want to I want to circle back to something that you you said earlier and it, and it just kind of you just kind of slipped out, but it boy, my ears just caught it. You you made a comment about being a youth pastor when you were younger whose focus was trying to be liked by students. And mm -hmm. I think that's such a challenge for so many youth pastors. We want, we want, we want to be liked. We want to fit in. We want to be cool. We, and, it, and it's almost a sign of immaturity to some degree because it's like, well, I don't really want to grow up too much, right? And, and we're failing to see in that moment if we're, if, if it, when you're stuck there as a youth pastor, because I think everyone is to some degree at, at some season in your tenure as a youth, youth minister. Uh, and if you're, if you're watching right now and you feel like, boy, I wrestle with that a little bit, we're failing to see uh, that being liked by a student doesn't necessarily produce the lifelong results that we will ultimately want to see in every single student, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and what I'm more specifically referring to, just to, to break it down, is, is that the, the failure of the adult generation passing on faith and passing on maturity and passing on leadership to the younger generation, uh, that, that puts us as a nation squarely where we're at right now. Yeah. Right. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Peter. We talked about about as parents, you can you can sow seeds of racism or you can sow seeds of righteousness. Right. This is a generational thing now. Right. And so what what the trend that I've often seen happen in uh, in our culture right now is is a culture, American culture in particular. We we idolize young. We idolize youth and being young. And the message that doing that sends to a younger generation is stay young as long as you can because becoming an adult is boring and terrible, right? Yeah. Um, and then when you as a young person hear that message while at the same time looking at the adults in your life and your view of them is inconsistent, not very dependable, 
hurtful in the way that they've treated me or talked to me, why would I ever want to become an adult? Mm -hmm. So a lot of spiritual parenting and spiritual fathering and parenting in general is, is living life in such a way that a younger generation looks at the older generation and says, I can't wait until I grow up and get to be like that. Yes. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we're not, we're, we're to me. So for me, like, like as a youth pastor, I want kids to look at me and I want them to say, that's the kind of man I want to be. Or look at my wife and say, that's the kind of woman I want to be, or that's the kind of marriage I want to have, or that's the kind of family that I want to raise one day. Uh -huh. And until the older generation understands the, the weight and the mantle of that, we have a young generation stuck in, I want to stay young as long as I can because growing up is terrible, right? Yeah. So anyway, I, so I said all that because I wanted to ask you this question. How did you get from being the youth pastor who just wanted to be liked to becoming the youth pastor who wanted to be a spiritual father? And Peter, as soon as Joey's yeah. done, I want, I want you to answer the same question. Yeah. It's probably a few things with that, but early on, in my preaching, I would ask kids afterward, hey, how'd you like the sermon? What did you think? I was trying to get feedback and seeing how they felt. And I often heard, man, I loved it. You were so funny. You were so funny. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm not trying to be a stand-up comedian though. Like I want to be a pastor. And so there was a shift that I knew I needed to take on in my maturity and in my understanding of saying, I'm not trying to be the cool big brother right now. I'm trying to be the father. And I think uh -huh. authenticity is more important than relevancy. And a lot mm -hmm. of times youth pastors feel like I got to be relevant. I got to wear some J's. I got to have, you know, Supreme on champions. I, I, I got to rock all the gear. If that's you, cool. But if that's not you, they're going to connect with you and respect you more for being authentic than for trying to pose like you're cool or not. And so for me, I, I know I'm not that. I mean, they don't make Supreme my size. I, I need extra large Supreme and, and they just can't afford that. <laughs> so I just rock what I rock and, and I don't worry about trying to be cool. They got enough of that. And I think honestly, as a, as a pastor, there's a lot more pressure today with social media and with honestly, a lot of the cool looking pastors out there who are rocking, you know, cool clothes and got a cool look and, and are putting off a really nice persona. And if I'm honest, there's times where I've been intimidated by that because that's just not me. That's not yeah. who I am. Yeah. Um, but I find that these kids will respond more to authenticity, to the yeah. fact that, again, like your daughters, which I've gotten to know, if you suddenly start trying to talk like they talk and act like they act, they're going to roll their eyes and walk away and say, Dad, stop it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's just if you're embarrassing yeah. them more than you're connecting yeah. with them. Yeah. Both of you get ready for that. Get get ready for your kids to be teenagers and they look at you and say, Dad, you're not allowed to ever say that word again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, you know, with, with these with these students, uh, there was a point in my life where I realized um, I got to be an example of who they can. My, I remember just thinking I want to put uh, prints in the snow that they could follow. Um, and so one of the things, you know, with everything we did when I was dating my wife, a lot of, uh, our purity was steeped in the fact that we wanted students to follow a godly example of dating and marriage because many, a majority of my kids never saw that. And so even when I proposed right. to my wife, I proposed right. to her in a castle in Scotland and, you know, there's this whole cool story behind it. I love to tell, you know, our children about that. I, I want to set, I tell the girls, I want to set the bar high. You know, even for my daughter, we traveled all over Come the world on. and I'm going to make sure she travels all over the world. So she's not impressed by some boy's bougie trip to Miami. Like <laughs> I want to make sure she understands daddy is setting the bar high for you. And so for me, I find that I set for many of these kids, the spiritual yeah. tone and the spiritual bar in their life. And um, most of my kids don't have godly parents. And so I'm the only one that they can see to set what it looks like to be a spiritual bar. When I understood the weight of that responsibility, I understood how much I needed to do that more than being funny in sermons. Come on. I, I understood Come on. they're going to follow me whether I lead them to heaven or hell. So I better be intentional on leading them to the right direction. That's so yeah. good. Peter, give me yeah. three points. I need yeah. three. Okay, just. <laughs> well, let me just say this. I. My youth pastor wore these, okay? <laughs> so he, he was out there in these streets just, just with these on, people. The, the I'm trying to tell you. 
Peter, for the people listening on the podcast next week, you got to describe the picture Yo, you just held these up. these right here are called fisherman sandals, dog. Look them up. <laughs> they got the holes in them just in case you get wet. They can seep through air out your feet with your sandals still on. Anyway, <laughs> so I learned really quick as as a young man pursuing ministry, like, like he wasn't my, – my youth pastor, he never tried to be – like one of the homies and like he was a yeah. white dude bald head uh nobody i don't know anybody like that uh i'm just kidding Eric. <laughs> no like why do but but hey, you hey, got, joey, but do you want to joey do you want to be my co-host starting <laughs> starting but, but, next week but, actually <laughs> but Pastor Eric, like Eric, you got some swag to you this dude had no swag i'm talking about he like he just he was not with it i remember his favorite store was kmart y'all remember kmart he used to take us on trips to kmart Let's anyway go. I just remember him not ever wanting to be like one of the boys and I just saw so much stability in him. And so like as a student, I'm trying to go back into that mentality for a minute. I remember there were some things I went through in my life, like when my parents got divorced, that I wasn't going to go talk to my friends that were like, you know, talking, listening to Ja Rule and like, like I wasn't going to go talk to them. Like I needed to talk yeah. to somebody stable. Yeah. I needed to talk to someone who I knew could really help me. I needed to yeah. talk to someone who I had respect for. And he didn't earn my respect by trying to be cool and like be in the mix and shoot basketball. He was just cool to me because of how I saw his wife look at him. Because I saw when his son would run into the room, he would say, Daddy, I saw him pray before and after the service. And I was like, this dude... He knows some things that I don't know. And I think that's what we forget as youth pastors. We're, we're so busy trying to capture the attention of the students. Sometimes we miss that they're coming to try to learn how to bring in the presence that we're, we've been telling them about. And if we're focused on capturing them instead of engaging heaven, we can't even lead them the way we're called to yeah. lead them. And so yeah. I just think about just the moments that I had with him were so were so powerful for me. So when I became a student ministries pastor, now naturally I'm, I'm a younger young, Man, so a lot of the stuff that's in culture right now, like I'm, I'm super into uh, just because uh, of just where I'm at in my age. But um, I'm learning that like, you know, a kid can come up to me every single week and be like, yo, those Yeezys you're wearing, those are fire. And that could be a conversation starter. But that kid, if I don't spend time and get in his world and listen to him, he's not yeah. coming back to me when he has a yeah. problem with his mom. That's not going to work, right? No. It's that consistency. I love you. You use the word authenticity. And I want to just sit on the word consistency. They're consistently, consistently showing up, consistently sending the text, consistently knowing their story, knowing their family, know, knowing their future. Where do you want to go? Go, consistently yeah. being with them and uh, and knowing where they're at. Sometimes a student will say something to me. They'll say, hey, actually, this is going on in my life. And I'll say, I know. And when I can say I know and I mean it, yeah. they're so blown away because they're like, what do you mean you know? I'm like, I right. talked to your mom. I talked to your small group leader. And mm -hmm. now I'm talking to you. I love you. Here's what I believe about you. Right? Yeah. Reshaping or reframing the narrative for my students is my favorite thing to do on the planet. Mm -hmm. Pastor Peter, I just got into this situation. So well, let me tell you this. This is who I think you are. You know what I mean? This is who God's called you to be. And yeah. so I just learned that, that the value is not in uh, what I wear physically or how I act, you know, or try to be in the group with them. It's who, what I wear spiritually. It's right. who I am behind the scenes and who I am off that stage. You taught me that more than anyone, Aaron. Like in that class, I sat and I just listened to, and I saw even behind the scenes how your students would talk about you and how you fathered so many people from a distance. And I learned that the stage only has power when the people in the seats trust you. And yeah. you can only earn their trust off the platform. You know what I mean? So yeah. anyway, that just I, that's just what helped me. I, I wholeheartedly believe as a youth pastor, the greatest compliment you could ever receive from a student is when they refer to you as dad mm. or mom. Mm -hmm. Or when they say you're like a dad or like mm -hmm. a mom. And, and, you, and you know, you will never take the place of the biological parent. And, and it's not biblical for us to attempt to take the yeah. place of the biological parent. A lot of what we do in youth ministry is partnering with parents, yet we've all talked about the need in our own personal lives as young men for spiritual fathers. But by the way, that need never goes away. So I'm 46 and I still need spiritual fathers in my life. And I still have a list of mentors that I call on a regular basis, some of whom I've talked to this week. Talk to me about this, guide me through this, walk me through this right here, so on. It's, you know, like, like you, never, you never lose that but for you and I as youth pastors now, the three of us and those youth pastors that are watching, 
for you to lay that kind of foundation in the life of a student, now you're giving them something that can travel with them for the duration of their life, right? Um, our, our buddy Jeff Grinnell is watching today and he put this comment on here. I just want to put it up because so I thought it was good. so relevant. He said, you know, a good statement on spiritual and the practical. I like to say it this way. The travel agent stays in the office, but the tour guide walks with students in real life. Jeff, that yeah. is, that's gold. That's yeah, so yeah. good. You know, yeah. I mean, cause that's what we're talking about is the youth pastor yeah. who's going to, you know, walk with students throughout their life and, 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 and wear the mantle and wear it well the mantle of spiritual dad or, or spiritual mom. And it will completely change the way you do youth ministry when you really uh, uh, like wear this and take this in, right? You're, you're no longer going for the young, cool. It's everything we've already said. Young, cool, relevant. Everyone likes me. They laugh at my jokes. They think I'm really fun. Like, like that all feels really good. I'm going to be real candid here. That feels really good if you're the insecure leader in the room. Because you need someone to feed an unhealthy emotional need that you have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And that's why that feels really good to you. Right. And so, so when you walk off stage and they're like, bro, that was fire. That feels really good. It really does. But, but if it feels too good and if you begin to need it, it in my mind, it reveals an unhealthy emotional need that you have in yes. your life. Right. Rather than taking on the mantle of, I'm spiritual dad, and I'm going to pass something on to you that's worth you living and eventually passing on to the next generation. Yeah. Peter, I know you were jumping to get in somewhere. Well, Go ahead. I'm interested to say something, and I want to say that it's a compliment to Jeff Grinnell <laughs> because the more leaders, like I, you know, the more leaders and the more friends you, you kind of gain in ministry, you kind of figure out where the starting point was for them. And I can't tell you how many people that I've met that the starting point for them was someone like Jeff Grinnell, who, who spoke into their life, who was their youth pastor. And I can name three people off the top of my head that yeah. are doing unbelievable things in ministry that came from his youth ministry, just crazy. But also just the people that, just the way you see people move, right? You can kind of tell who they are. The way I see Joey talk, right? Joey, I feel like I love listening to Joey talk because he's a man who's yeah. been through something. Uh, but but these, these spiritual fathers, like talking to you guys right now in this conversation, brings me so much life because sometimes in youth ministry, it feels like this is what it's about. It's this cool game. But the yeah. fathering stuff is the stuff that's seen behind the scenes. And you can only kind of tell that in how you watch people uh, respond, how you watch them react to certain situations and, and moments. And I, I think right now, like, honestly, like Joey hearing about your ministry and Aaron being a direct uh, product of your ministry, like you guys are so good at this. And I want to ask this question to both of you before we get into the comment questions is this is for a young youth pastor that's saying, like, I feel awkward being a father. What do you say to them? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great, that's question. a good question actually. Cause I, I think I've been there. Um, the first maybe five years of my youth ministry, I wasn't just young, I was single. And so I just remember thinking, okay, I'm, I'm a single young adult. What do I, how can I be a spiritual father? And I almost copped out and called myself a spiritual big brother, uh, because I felt like there was less responsibility to do that. Um, mm. but it's one of those wow. things, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of young people throughout the years that I've met who, uh, became biological fathers before, uh, you know, they intended to, if I can say it that way. And the one reality you got to help them understand is, uh, like it or not, you're a dad now. Like, you, you don't really have a say so, dude. Wow. So you have to learn to grow up quick. And you can't sit there and be like, yeah, but I'm only 18. I got the rest of No, it doesn't matter. Like, you're a dad now. And so you need to maybe grow up a little faster than other people your age. And I think part of that is something that a young leader has to understand. Um, by the very nature of your position, you're a dad already, or you're mm -hmm. a mom, you know, might be a, a lady in ministry. And uh, regardless, the very nature of your position makes you a spiritual parent. And mm -hmm. so rather than be intimidated by that or fearful of that, take the bull by the horns and lead with it. You're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a new dad. And by no means do I think I'm being great at it. We're figuring stuff out. There's times where I'm like, we were supposed to do that. What? I don't know. This is my first kid. I don't know. <laughs> We're supposed to do that. Um, and you always you always feel like a new dad, Joey, Peter. Yeah, <laughs> you always feel. I'm I'm because 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 your kids go through stages. Yeah, and mm. and I'm gonna I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry to cut you off. I'll, I'll go right back to you, Joey. But like like one of the things my wife and I realize is that that each of us were uniquely gifted for certain stages of the life of our kids. I think that's true in youth ministry as well. Yeah. But but you're well, always gonna feel like a new dad. Here's an I love that you touched on that though because here's an intimidation I had. How can I be a spiritual parent to teenagers 
and tell parents what to do or yeah. give parents advice when I don't have kids. That was a yeah. big struggle for me. Yeah. And I realized at some point, okay, I may not have biological kids, but this is this parent's first teenager. It's not my first teenager. I've had a ton of teenagers mm. and I've, mm -hmm. I've already worked with a ton of teenagers. And let's be honest, there's nothing new under the sun. We've worked with the same right. issues. Right. I mean, there are some kids that I feel like I've been cloned every year where I'm like, oh, I've had this kid 17 times already. <laughs> and so a lot of times there's this intimidation because of what we're not instead of focusing on what we are. And right. I think, you know, we have experience. We have the Holy Spirit to help us in the areas that we struggle with. And you have to accept the fact, too, that you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. I have a ton of mistakes that I've made as a spiritual dad. There's unfortunately uh, kids who I don't think even are walking with God anymore because of mistakes that I've made. And you can either sit there and quit and, and just be like, well, I'm, it's not worth it. Or you could step up and be better for the next one. Um, and so there are times where I've had to adjust, I've had to fix, I've had to humble myself and, and realize, okay, if I could do it again, maybe I'd do that differently. And the next yeah. opportunity I have, I will but I'm not gonna let the fear of failure stop me from being a parent to the ones who need me to be one. And so I accept the fact that I'm gonna make mistakes. And I'll, I'll add a couple of practical suggestions to what you're saying. Um, you know, first, um, if, if you are a youth pastor who, who does not have uh, in your own personal life a great relationship with your biological father, or maybe you feel as if you haven't had a lot of spiritual fathers in your life, you have been honored to be that for someone else, which they've never had. Yeah. So understand that that is a gift that you have. Although that gift comes with pain and that gift comes with heartache and no one wishes that on you, you've been given a gift to be able to connect and relate to the students who don't have that kind of family or that kind of background. It's a no. gift for you and, and you can be for someone what they never had, right? Or mm -hmm. what you never had. If, if you have a background like Joey, where you had a great relationship with a biological father or like me, right? Um, or you had many spiritual fathers in your life, like, like us and Peter as well. Then you now have the responsibility to be for someone else, what someone else was for you. So that's the yes. inspirational side of this, right? More practically speaking to the young youth pastor who's watching right now, who feels like, how do I wrap my head around this? You need to intentionally build relationships with men who are going to be spiritual fathers in your life. And yep. you need to intentionally invite them to serve as youth leaders in your youth ministry. Mm -hmm. And I know that's intimidating for you. If you're a young youth pastor, it's much easier to recruit the 18 year old who just graduated from high school. Yep. Right. But when you only, and I'm not saying you don't need those because you, because you probably do need some youth and fun and energy and excitement. But when you only have younger leaders around you as a youth pastor, you're, you are stunting your maturity as a youth pastor. Absolutely. Yes. Right. And what you need is you need older men and older women who aren't afraid to tell you how it is to rebuke you, to yell at you for driving the church van too fast, coming home from the all nighter, talking from personal experience now, right? To, to tell you don't ever play that game again, talking from personal experience right now, to tell you I'm entrusting the life of my child to you. Stop acting like a child yourself, talking from personal experience right now. All yeah. of those things and many more came from me being willing to have older parents and older leaders involved in our, in our student ministry. So that's, right, right. that's on can the practical I, can side. Can I add to that for a second? Yeah, the practical absolutely. practical side too is like, don't, if you're looking for spiritual fathers and you're trying to attract those leaders, you can't attract what you're not. So you yeah. gotta be mature. You gotta, you gotta develop yourself. You gotta have a diverse palette of things that yeah. you're, that you can speak into because you're not gonna attract a, a, a CEO of a, of a, you know, a Fortune 200 company to come be a leader in your youth ministry when he leads people all day long if you're not growing in your leadership. And, yeah. and to that same matter, like you, if you want a spiritual father in your life, what I've learned is you have to go pursue them and this yes. is where i feel like a yes. lot of youth pastors yes. my friends my yes. guys guys are my age are going well no one wants to pour into my life and i'm like you're not reaching out to anyone you're not chasing oh, yeah. anyone and then you're yep. upset that no one's pouring into your life it's like every mentor i've ever had spiritual dad i've ever had i've had to chase them i've yeah. had to send them hey can you pour, can you help me hey this is what i'm going through hey speaking to like i've had to go get them to be a part of my life and uh, and if they start and to if, drift it, it's on it, me if you're on the receiving end of that, you know, like I'm a little older, so I've been on the receiving end of that. I, I don't want to have to chase after you 
to become your spiritual father because that means to me you're not interested. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I'm not I'm not going to invest my time in you if you're not interested. So I want as a spiritual dad, you you need and you want the younger people to come to you and chase after you. Hey, can you give me this? 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 Right. Okay. So let me, let me, let me, let's take some questions here. Here's a comment real quick. And this one is uh, near and dear to my heart. I hope she's still watching. This is from Cassie. Um, and uh, so she says this, she says, I'm a 30 something mom serving youth. And I'm not going to lie. I've worried about not being cool enough to connect with my students. I'm working on not worrying about that. Thank you for this conversation. So not really a question there, but I think just it speaks to Cassie. Thank you. It speaks to some of the insecurities that we Cassie's all have one as of my leaders. leaders. She is amazing. Yeah, yeah, amazing. absolutely. So we got a couple minutes left and uh, let, I want to take a couple of real specific questions here. Let me, let me just say this because this is cool. So let me, let me first ask this, Joey, are you available next Thursday at the same time to have part two of this conversation? Because I think there's so oh, much yeah. we haven't unpacked. Okay. Absolutely. So, so next Thursday, same same topic, part two, and Jeff Grinnell is going to join us for the conversation. I just texted wow. him and he was like, I would love to be a part of this conversation. So Jeff, I know you've been watching. Thanks for being a part of today. And then next week, we're just, we're going to continue on. So um, we got a couple minutes left here. Um, this is from a youth pastor in Ohio, James uh, Esposito. Uh, he was in my youth ministry for a short period of time. Now youth pastor in Ohio. Uh, he says, spiritual fathering is so important in youth ministry. Really glad you guys are covering this topic. How do you not only be the spiritual father for students, but lead and train your leaders to also step into that role. So, so here you go. I, it's, it's, it's what I said. He, we, we love the inspiration, but here's a youth pastor who's like, just tell me some of the information, some of the, the practical. So whichever one of you guys wants to jump in and, and coach yeah. James here for a couple minutes. I'll give you a real quick practical thing. Uh, Aaron, you mentioned this earlier um, about raising up spiritual dads. And, you know, the three of us have been pretty big on the camp scenes and, and doing camps. And yeah. I think the three of us have the same heart when it comes to especially altar calls where we know we look like rock stars to the kids, but we want to support the pastors and the leaders in the room and to make sure that the students are being prayed over by them and the students yeah. are connecting with them. Yeah. In the same way, I think in your student ministry, it's easy for you, especially with your insecurities that all of us have, to want to be the one that they go to. And you have to be able to set up your team for them to be able to be gone to. And so mm -hmm. what that means is, if a kid comes up to me and they're working through something, I would go, hey, you know what? I love that you came up. That's a great topic. But hey, Peter has gone through something similar. Uh, I think he would be a great person for you to connect with on this topic. Yeah, I had a young lady one time message me about her struggles with pornography. And I'm like, hey, do you mind me asking why you're telling me this? Because it was really awkward. And she said, oh, you said to expose sin before it exposes you. So I just want her to open up about what I'm struggling with. I go, man, I'm so grateful that you did that. But you know what? My wife would probably be a better person because she can relate to that and she's gone through that. Would yeah. you mind hitting her up? And yeah. so it's not deflecting the kids, but it is setting your team up for success. And some of it is just opportunity. Why would they go to them if they can go to you, right? And and by the very nature of your title, sometimes it feels like, yeah, no, I don't want the the you know, it's like I walk into the barbershop. I don't want the guy in front of the door. That's the bad one. That's the one who takes all the walk-ins. I want the main <laughs> barber. I want the owner of the barber shop. And I, you do may my, not know. I do my own, bro. I don't, I don't yeah, even yeah, have yeah. that experience. <laughs> but, Aaron, barber shops are these places where people get haircuts. <laughs> <And stuff. laughs> so I think you know, sometimes uh, as leaders, we, we hog it up. We, we take all the spiritual parenting and, and we don't give them an opportunity to figure some stuff out. Now, when they have that opportunity, we coach them, we lead them, we help them grow in their maturity. And I would say the biggest thing um, is instilling integrity, uh, integrity, integrity, integrity. If Because they can spend all the time with them, but they're right. going to pass on who they are. If they're yeah. not spiritually mature, if they're not having that spiritual walk, yeah. you're going to backtrack your youth ministry because, yeah, that person was cool or relevant or interesting, but they weren't spiritual. They weren't somebody yeah. that – so they're fathers, but they're not spiritual fathers. And we need to yeah. be careful to make sure that within our leadership, that's at the heart of what we're trying to develop so that they develop it underneath it. And so for you're me, the shepherd, yeah, and, and I you, spend more time yep. with my leaders than I do with my students. I love it. I spend time with my students because I love them and it's fun for me. But if I can replicate it in my leaders, they can replicate it in their students. Yep. That's it. That's Great. so good. And that's that's, you know, that's if, if you don't position your leaders wisely 
in, in how they're going to build relationships with students. What you said is profound and, and, and very true. You set your youth ministry back because now students uh, are being poured into by someone in your youth ministry that you don't really want them to become like. Yeah. Right. Exactly. What does Jeannie Mayo say all the time? You teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. She said, yep. or John Maxwell said it, one of the, you know, right. And, and, <laughs> and, and so if, so my job then as a shepherd is I'm going to reproduce myself in my leaders because I want my leaders to reproduce themselves in their students. It's a transference of spiritual DNA that's yeah. taking place, you know, and Absolutely. That, that has to happen. Yeah. Um, let's take one more question and then we'll, we'll, we'll land this thing. In. It's been a great conversation and we'll just want to pick up right where we left off, um, next week. And, um, we're just going to, we're going to keep on going. Um, so this is, this is a question from, uh, Dylan. Um, great question here. Um, a question I processed through before when you leave a student ministry and are a spiritual father, how do you balance being spiritual father to the students from that ministry and giving space for the new youth pastor to lead Dylan? Thanks for asking this question. This is a great question, whichever one of you wants to take it. Yeah, no one wants I, to take it. I, Dylan, no, we're going to take it next week because we need a week to think about it. So, Yeah, when you leave a student ministry and are the spiritual father, how do you balance being the spiritual father to students from that ministry and giving the new youth pastor space to lead? Um, well, let me touch in on one thing real quick, yeah. Peter. I'll give you a second to think about it because I never left, but I did take over for a guy. So the guy that transferred over, um, I think the thing that he did so well was he set up the leadership to be spiritual parents as well. And so uh, it was me and him leading for a while before he transitioned out. So literally the kids thought was instead of two youth pastors, we just get one. And they're like, yeah, okay. And there wasn't that big of a loss because the youth ministry wasn't solely dependent on one person. And so I think if you set up the team and it becomes a youth ministry thing and the whole village ends up raising the kid. So Mm -hmm. there's always gonna be a little bit of a pain because some kids are gonna be more connected to you than anyone else. And I think there's a slow transfer that has to happen with that. But you're much more likely to not leave them abandoned and wandering if you set up multiple people uh, to be a part of that. I don't think you have to have one spiritual father ever for the rest of your life. Yeah. And so I think the more people of influence you can add into that youth ministry, the easier the transition becomes if and when you need to move along. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Mm. That's great. Yeah, I, I think I think that's the key. I think, uh, like I always say this to to our leaders, and I mean it. It's true. Like I don't feel good when I walk into the room and all the students are like, Pastor Peter, Pastor Peter, Pastor Peter. I love it when a leader walks in though, and they're like, Lori, and they're like, Cassie, you know. And that's it's the win. Uh, that's right. The win. That's that's the real win. Yeah. And so I, I think we 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 set our leaders up by, by training them well. And, and we create new youth space for the youth pastor by celebrating the new youth pastor, by yeah. speaking of their strengths and creating uh, this expectation about how this thing is going to a different level and not belittling the new youth pastor that's coming in. And I think the transfer of, of not just what we're talking about to our leaders, but the transfer to the new youth pastor, I want to see, man, if I'm going to make a transition uh, and, I, and I haven't seen, like I haven't done, I'm sorry, man, transitions but i've seen uh, many transitions and when i see that youth pastor with his arm around the new youth pastor loving on the pictures taken together hey come let me introduce you to this student that transfer is facilitated i would say by by the main youth pastor so the pressure isn't on the new youth pastor coming in it's on you to make sure that the students that you're taking care of feel like this guy is not only just as good of an yeah. option but could even be better you know what I mean? And, yeah. and speaking to that and loving them. And so I think I think that's that's part of it. I also think just what Joey said, I love that the whole village, the vi- the youth ministry team is taking care of the, stu- of, the of the student um, and, and they, they lose you. And so they feel like, man, I just lost this important figure in my life. But look at all these people who are still pillars uh, that are holding me up. So yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah, that's so great. Guys, this has been a great conversation. I'm excited to pick up right here. Um, and, and, and continue it on. And uh, we'll have another great uh, voice in the mix with Jeff Grinnell joining Ooh. us. Um, Joe, I'm excited. Next next week, I'm going to specifically ask you to share a little bit about some of the trends that you've seen happen in young men in the city of Chicago that have lost father figures in their life and, and a yeah. conversation that uh, you and I had had about a year or so ago. I think that's going to be really profound. And and that will even tie into a lot of the cultural um, upheaval that we're experiencing as a nation right now. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure Jeff, uh, being from uh, Minneapolis, where he's at, uh, will have a lot, lot to even speak to some of our current issues as well as this current issue as well. So yeah. for those of you that have joined us, thanks for being a part. 
And yes. uh, if you love this content and you love what we're doing, we're here every Thursday, uh, uh, LTG Live podcast every Thursday at noon. If you ever miss one of our live episodes, feel free to subscribe to our, uh, our podcast. Uh, you can find it on Spotify or Apple. You can subscribe to our YouTube. All of the videos from this go to our, our YouTube channel as well. We'll post links here in the next minute uh, in our chat so you can easily get to those things. And uh, all of this is sponsored by leadthegeneration.com. Check out who we are, what we do, subscribe to our newsletter, uh, and be a part Be a part of the conversation. And uh, so next week, same time, same place, same three faces plus one. Uh, Peter, let us know what color we're supposed to wear next week so we can all uh, be on the same fuchsia. page. I'm yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and and I'm, I'm expecting some good uh, Father's Day, um, you know, you know, comments from from you guys celebrating for your first time. So uh, yeah. it's going to be uh, it's going to be really good. But um, yes. thanks for being a part of the conversation, Peter wow. and yes. Joey. Um, those of you that are still with us, uh, give us a like or a share on Lead Thank the Generation's you, Facebook page. And uh, Joey, some great thoughts. We're excited to pick up this conversation again. Um, Peter, you usually close us in prayer, so why don't you go ahead and do that again? Yeah. And um, and uh, we're excited uh, just to have you be with us every single week, Peter, and share and be a yeah. co-host in this. Thanks, and uh, next week's going to be a Thanks. great continuation of this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. God, thank you so much just for these thoughts, God, that were presented today that are all, that are making all of us better. Thank you for Joey, uh, for the wisdom, Lord, that he just brought. Uh, Lord, just giving us insight, Lord, to something maybe we've never thought about before or we didn't have a lot of answers around. Lord, I, I just pray that you'll continue to bless his ministry. And thank you, God, for leading the generation. Thank you for Aaron, uh, Lord, a spiritual father to so many. Uh, Lord, transforming the globe by what he's doing through this ministry. Bless us today as we keep our eyes on you and as we uh, get become better together uh, to lead this generation. We love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Awesome. Love you. <laughs>